check this out. We have an actual real analog synthesizer uh, from IK Multimedia called the Uno Synth. It's a, uh, a two oscillator design uh, with a, a two pole resonant multimode filter. Aha. It has a, um, a capacitance sensing um, keyboard. In fact, the entire interface, except for the knobs, is cap sense. So you don't have to press the buttons, you actually just have to touch the buttons. This makes it uh, extremely lightweight, portable, and all that, and also helps keep the cost down. Um, the synth is actually $199, which is pretty cool for a, a real analog synth. Um, We've, we've set out to make uh, the analog synth for everyone, and that even went into our, our choice of filter designs. Um, like I mentioned, it's a, it's a two-pole sweepable resonant multi-mode filter. So we've got, uh, obviously, our low-pass mode, our high-pass mode, nicely done, and our band-pass mode. And the idea was um, to make a synth that obviously could be used for albums and movies and um, television and all that sort of thing, but by professionals, use it on big tours, but also a synth that a kid could take on the train with him and just plug earbuds in, it runs on batteries, and do his electronic or EDM stuff or just kind of fun experiment, experimental music with it as well. So um, with the filter, we've come up with a design that can do obviously classic sounds like you know everything from Tangerine Dreams to the Stranger, uh, Stranger Things theme that uh, Della's playing all the time. <laughs> oh, wait, are you gonna do it? Okay. Okay, here you go, he's gonna do it. Classic analog subtractive synthesis sounds, but with our um, custom designed overdrive and high resonances, we can also get real aggressive, like ultra modern Euro rack style, um, you know, EDM sounds and industrial sounds and um, much more non traditional, you know, aggressive sounds out of the synth. Um, you heard that it has an arpeggiator. It's a 10-mode arpeggiator. It also has a sequencer. It's a 16-step sequencer, and a, se and a sequence is stored with each of the 100 presets. Um, so you can do traditional step sequencing. You can also do um, real-time sequencing. You press record and play, like on any recorder, and then um, it will quantize what you play to the 16 steps. Um, now. This is extra cool. For each of the 16 steps, you can actually write 20 different parameters. So you can completely transform the sound for each step. And in fact, this sound that Enrico is playing, um, he's made a drum pattern where he actually creates a kick drum sound in step one, and then a snare drum sound on the backbeat, then a tom sound, and then back to a kick drum sound. So this is just one, this is a monophonic synthesizer but all the parameters are, are changing in real time. And because it's an analog synth, there's no zippering or anything. It's perfectly smooth. This is the one where you change the tuning. Right. So he's changing the oscillator to tuning. We'll get there. Yeah. So he's actually modulating the pitch of oscillator 2 on, on different steps. And the, the keyboard also indicates which step you're playing, and then the LEDs above tell you which note you're playing. So it's, it's sort of an interface for the step sequencer as well as a data entry thing for the keyboard as well.
for our for the actual synthesis part, there's a four by four button matrix. So the, the top row is the oscillator row. And uh, here we have our two oscillators with continuously variable wave shape for each one. So you can go from, uh, we get the oscillator row, you go from triangle to triangle saw, to our sawtooth wave, to between saw and square, to our square wave, and then different pulse widths all the way to 50% pulse that uh, we can modulate with the LFO or with an envelope. So you can do pulse width modulation back and forth or you can sweep the pulse width with the envelope. Uh, and that's independent for each oscillator. So you could actually have, uh, you could morph between like a triangle wave and sawtooth wave on oscillator one and then do pulse width modulation on oscillator two. Or do, you know, just a straight sawtooth wave, an octave below on oscillator two and pulse width modulation on oscillator one if you wanted to. Uh, we also have a separate noise generator, dedicated noise generator. You heard the, the snare drum that, that Enrico was making earlier that, you know, we, we go from like the tonal kick drum to the noise snare drum in an instant. The second row is the filter section. We talked about the, the three modes, low pass mode, high pass, band pass. Then our resonance control. We'll turn our cutoff down. And then I mentioned the overdrive control here that goes from just subtle saturation to like aggressive distortion. And then the usual envelope amount, so the amount going to the filter envelope. There are two envelopes. There's a dedicated filter envelope and a dedicated amplitude envelope. So we actually have two parameters for each on the front panel. Uh, for the filter, we have attack and decay. For the amplitude, we have attack and release. There are actually four stages for each envelope in the synth, full ADSR for both. Um, you can access those via MIDI CC or via the included um, computer editor that we include with it. We put the, the two most important parameters on the front panel just to keep it as compact as possible and as, as simple as possible. So we had to make some creative choices and these are obviously the parameters that you use most on, on this kind of a product. The bottom row is our LFO. There are seven different wave shapes. We've got our sine wave, triangle wave, sawtooth down, sawtooth up, square, random, and sample and hold. Um, the LFO can modulate um, pitch, filter, and amp. There you The, the bottom row has five performance controls, and these are um, modulations that are set up um, basically to animate the sound with just a button press. So instead of having to program something with a modulation matrix or on a modular synth, you know, do a complicated patch, we've just set up five dedicated buttons for various musical effects. So there's a button for vibrato, which is pitch modulation, and that runs at the speed of the LFO. So set the rate however you like. Then there's wah, which is filter modulation. Tremolo, which is amplitude modulation. And then we have two buttons uh, for dive and scoop. And this is an idea that we took from some of the classic 70s synths, like the Yamaha CS80 and like the Roland SH5 and SH2, um, where you press a button to do a pitch scoop up to the note or a dive down to the note. So on the, uh, on the Roland uh, SH2, for example, it's called Auto Bend. Um, on the CS80, I forget the name of the little green slider that you flip to do that, but uh, it's the same idea. So these are just 
um, instant articulations that anyone can play and get super musical effects just by playing a button. And you can use that with the sequence, with the arpeggiator, even while you're not playing the unit. So let's say you have a sequence going or an arpeggio going, you, you want to put vibrato on that one note, okay, you just press that button and you have instant beautiful vibrato, beautiful vibrato on that one note. Oh, you know what we should also talk about? Oh, we have a delay. You hear the delay effect in there with adjustable time and mix. Nice. The other thing we have is, so there's a, it's a two octave keyboard. It's actually two octaves and two notes because we wanted to have 16 keys on the bottom too, so you can edit steps in the step sequencer. So you can play a, a, a Western chromatic scale, that's the default, but we actually have several other scales um, built in. So major, minor, then like the usual Dorian, Mixolydian, uh, Phrygian, uh, yes, Klezmer and, and all of that cool stuff. Okay, and as far as connections go, Listen to that release envelope. <laughs> okay. As far as connections go, uh, there's um, MINI in and out. Um, it's, a, it's a monaural signal. It's a, it's a monophonic analog synth, and there's no panning modulation. However, it works with a stereo jack. So if you plug in earbuds or headphones, it'll be in both of your ears. There's an auxiliary audio in if you want to daisy chain a drum machine or another Uno synth or a modular Moog synthesizer, if you happen to have one. I do. Um, there's MIDI in and out. Um, on these uh, proprietary MIDI uh, mini jacks, but we give you the cable. So um, it's, it's this small jack on the one side, but then you get the normal five pin DIN on the other. So you don't actually have to go out and find these cables that come with the synth. Um, it's powered via USB or via four AA batteries. Oh, don't play the synth while you're taking the battery compartment out. Uh, four AA batteries that go in here. It'll run for about 10 hours um, on four AA batteries. Probably depends on the kind of batteries you use and how intensely you're using it. But, um, you know, the way I think of it is you could get through an entire day of, of a Coachella festival, like with one set of batteries, yeah. you know, if they'd let you play that long. So, um, oh, a USB. So in addition to USB power, um, this also uh, carries MIDI, so you can connect this to your computer and instantly the UNOSynth is connected to your DAW. You can turn on sync and then it will receive MIDI clock from the computer. So your sequencer, your arpeggio, even your LFO rates will sync to your tempo, if you like. Each step, um, we can change uh, the synth parameters. And you heard the one pattern that, that Enrico did where he set up a kick drum on, on step one and then a snare drum on step five and then a tom on step six. And he's just doing that by you know playing each note and then programming the sound for each note, going to the next step, programming that, like this one. So now he has the, the filter closed on step five and then more open on step 13. And you can do this in, in real time, um, or you can actually program it without the sequence playing. Just keep playing the same note and then dialing it in the way you want. But there are 20 different parameters that can be automated per step. So you can really like transform, yeah, it's like, like having a separate patch for every single step. My role has sort of been um, supervising the whole product, kind of uh, the old guy on the team, maybe, because, uh, you know, given my history with, with uh, analog and digital synths, going back to, of course, the Alesis Andromeda, and then the QS synthesizers before that, and I've worked with, you know, a lot of different companies in the industry. Um, so I've sort of been the... Um, uh, objective resource on the product where I'll say, no, 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 a synthesizer normally doesn't work like that. You should do it this way. So I had a lot to do with the interface design along with uh, Enrico, the owner of the company. And then this Enrico is the product manager. 
And this Enrico is involved uh, with a lot of the, uh, the sequencer design and uh, again, this kind of per step synthesis that we talked about. And then we work with a company called Sound Machines, which is an Italian boutique synth, synth manufacturer. And they did the actual um, electrical circuit design for us to our, our specification. So it's been a really great collaboration uh, with just a lot of very smart people involved.